Welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host, and today we have with us Evan Bishop, the principal of the Hopkinton High School. Hi, Mary. How are you? Welcome, Evan. Thank you. I'm doing well. And you? Great. Thanks I for really, having me. You're very welcome. And I really appreciate that you took the time out or make the time in your schedule to come over. I'm happy I'm, to do so. Yeah. I know how busy you are during the <laughs> school year, so this is wonderful. Sure. I do want to talk about the high school. I know there's a lot going on. There is, New yes. programs, some policy changes, yep. and we'll get into all of that. Great. But I'd like to start to know a little bit about you first. Maybe talk a little bit about your background and how you came to Hopkinton. Sure. Yeah, okay. I'd be happy to. Um, so I grew up in Burlington, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, and graduated from Burlington High School and went to Fairfield University, uh, where I uh, studied sociology. Uh, graduated in, at Fairfield in 2003. Uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do, uh, but my mother was a uh, worked at Suffolk University in the uh, graduate admissions office, and so I knew I wanted to get involved with coaching. I knew I wanted to get involved with working with kids. Uh, but I didn't know exactly what subject I wanted to get involved in, uh, but I knew it was something I wanted to do. So uh, there was a master's of on school counseling, and I thought that would be interesting. And so I went into that. It was a two-year program. Uh, and after those two years, I was hired as a guidance counselor in 2005, 2006 at the high school. And I've been here ever since. I was a guidance counselor for four years, spent some time as an assistant principal for a few years, and now this is my third year as the principal. Well, that's wonderful. And yeah. I know people who've been in town for a while are familiar a little bit with your background. Mm -hmm. But we're getting new people in town all the time, so Very I appreciate yes. that, so they'll yeah, know a little absolutely. bit about who you are yeah. and where you came from. Yeah. In fact, I, I hear often in town that people who are moving in, most even most recently, say it's all about the schools, mm. the wonderful schools and the reputation yeah. of those schools. It's good to hear. Yeah, we, we yes. have a very strong system, K through 12. We do. And I'm just happy to be a part yeah. of it. Yeah. And I'm very glad that you are. Mm. One of the very important things and a topic at the forefront at all the schools and in Hopkinton is school safety. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know there's some things going on at Hopkinton High School, mm -hmm. and would you talk to us a little bit about the school safety programs? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, so the district actually has adopted a new uh, safety protocol called ALICE. It's an mm -hmm. acronym. It stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. Um, so the biggest change from our previous safety protocols, which mm -hmm. uh, in an intruder situation, students would lock down. There'd be an announcement over the loudspeaker that we're going to lock down. This new protocol with ALICE, there's still the option of locking down, but students can evacuate depending on the information that they're getting over the loudspeaker from me or from whoever's making the announcement. Uh, so if there is an intruder in a certain uh, area of the building, uh, mm -hmm. if you are away from that area, you can evacuate the building. In the past, you'd have to lock down. And studies from Virginia Tech, from Columbine, talked a little bit about how if students had the ability to evacuate, there could have been less casualties. So we are one of uh, a number of high schools around the area and districts around the area that are going towards this ALICE program. Mm -hmm. We actually have an upcoming drill for our students. We've introduced it to our staff and students at the beginning of the year. Um, we're going to go through with our first drill on November 19th. Um, and we're going to come up with a few scenarios for kids just to talk them through it. Obviously, it's not a subject people enjoy talking about. It's, it's very scary, and it's, it's unfortunate that we even have to talk about it, but yeah. it is the reality, and we need to be prepared. Um, so we feel like we've taken the right steps. We've worked very closely with the Hopkinton Police Department, Officer of Powers, as well as the Fire Department. Um, we've been through kind of what we call uh, tabletop drills with the Fire Department, where they present a scenario to some of our crisis response team members at the high school, and we go through the drills to see what we would do given the situation. So we feel prepared. So at the drill that's coming up, we'll let parents know about it, we'll let kids know about it, uh, and we'll go through a few scenarios as a drill to see how it goes with this new protocol. But it's something that we are, uh, we feel it's a better option than we've had in the past when it comes to uh, school safety. Well, it sounds very well thought out mm. and a lot of participation, as you say, not only by the school, um, but by the police department and fire department. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I imagine that you're going to make that drill seem as real as possible. Yes, to, I would try. To get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you make sure that the student and maybe parents or someone who is coming to the school that day and may not totally be aware. Sure, How do you yeah. make them aware that, hey, this is just a drill, don't yes, panic? Yes, absolutely, yes, that's a, that's a good yeah. question. So, uh, so it's gonna be on a Thursday, so the beginning of that week we'll send out notification to parents through a listserv message. Uh, the students know it's coming up as well, but we'll also talk to them about it in school on Wednesday to prepare them for Thursday. 
Um, so we'll, there'll be signs around the building when the drill is in place so that if people are coming up to the school, they'll know that there's a drill going on because there will be excess police there as well as fire to see how the drill goes. Um, I'll be making the announcements for the most part. Now we might have another staff member make one announcement as well during the, the drill, but we will continue to say that it is a drill throughout the course of the process. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. We don't want anybody panicking no, or we do not. somebody do calling not. the news media and yeah, saying, absolutely. oh, no, the school's in lockdown. Yes, <laughs> yes. we've had enough news media. We don't yeah. need any more. Yeah. Now, you did mention that normally you would make these kinds of announcements. Yep. Uh, who has access to the announcement system to communicate this kind of thing. Yeah, so this year we have a new phone system. So every phone in every classroom has the ability to page the building. In the past, there were only a few phones in the high school uh, that we'd be able to make an all-school page that everybody mm -hmm. hears. So we made that improvement. We've talked to the staff on how to do that if they are if they see an intruder at their end of the uh, you know by their classroom or they have something of concern, they can make the page mm -hmm. um, and let the school know of a, of a situation. But primarily in these situations, it comes from the main office. Okay, great. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, that's a good program. Yes. But you have a lot of other wonderful programs that are going we on do. at the yes. school. Some newer, some a little bit that have been in place. Sure. Tell us about, I think there's a new writing program that's going on? Yeah, we have a new writing center uh, that we established this year. Uh, we, we wanted to have a place where kids could get additional help uh, with their abilities and their skill when it comes to writing, mm -hmm. um, in, in addition to their English class. So we were fortunate enough to, to get that in our budget this year. It's a, it was a former English teacher at the high school. Uh, her name is Kate Forsythe. So she's now the writing center teacher or the director that we're calling her. Um, and students can drop in for extra help, say if it's for college writing essay or if they have an assignment for class. Some kids are scheduled in there to get additional help on their skills. Um, but so far, her schedule has been booked from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, and kids are really utilizing that. So it's, been, it's, it's just starting. We still need to work some kinks out, but it's been a great addition to helping our kids when it comes to the response to intervention for our students. All right, so it's not like actually a class they elect, but it's something no. that will complement their classes and help them with you their skills. It. You have it. Yep, and so some kids are assigned in there uh, based on recommendations from teachers and counselors and maybe even parents, mm -hmm. uh, but for, primarily it's students dropping in to get extra help. All right. Yeah. Well, writing's good to focus on, yes. but there's a lot happening with technology as well. And mm -hmm. I understand you have some things going on there, too. True, yes. Uh, you know, we're, our school is full one-to-one, -one, uh, so every student has a device, whether they lease it through the school or, or bring it uh, from home. Uh, we call it the BYOD program. It's our one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a tech integration specialist. His name is Fred Haas, who's at the high school, who works with teachers to try to integrate technology into the classroom. Um, and so we feel that that's an area that we're pretty progressive with. Um, you know, a lot of schools will come and see how we're utilizing the technology. Um, our teachers are uh, extremely flexible and they have taken to the, the computers very well. I think we're at the next stage now that we can do a little bit more. Uh, and I think teachers are ready for that extra help. And so, um, you know, it, usually when you transition, it can, be, it can be difficult, but it was a very mm -hmm. smooth transition at the high school, I think large part because of how dedicated our teachers are. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're at the next stage where we can start to incorporate a little bit more into our classrooms. Sounded very good. Yeah. Uh, in terms of transition, you mentioned that and it flashed in my head. <coughs> transitioning, transitioning sometimes from one grade to another is a difficult sure. thing. Yep. And there's something you have called the junior experience that helps with transition. I we do, about. yeah. So uh, it came about actually this idea of the junior experience from our school council, uh, which mm -hmm. is a collection of teachers, uh, parents in the community, and students. And so we wanted to give our students a little bit more real life hands-on experience outside uh, of the walls of the high school. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we came up with this idea of having a graduation requirement in the junior year, you have five hours to, uh, to do either a community service project or a job shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and last year it was about 60% of the juniors did a community service, 40% did a job shadow. Already this year the numbers are starting to go more towards the job shadow. I think kids are finding that more beneficial in terms of helping them plan their major. That junior year is a critical time for them to kind of think about what they're going to do with their lives and so it's been a, it's been a it's been a great program uh, Kylie Murray is one of our guidance counselors she heads the program she's our advisor okay. uh, we've had a number of parents in the community offer their support companies around the area offer we've had we've sent kids into Boston um, to, to actually 25 or so kids last year we took a bus in, in, into Boston um, just to see how a, a company works. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been interesting. Kids have reported back that it's, it's been a very good process for them. They've enjoyed it. They've learned a lot from it. So it's something we'd like to expand. Uh, maybe it'd have it be more hours, more grades. But right now, we're able to manage just the junior class five hours. But it's something we'd like to build on moving forward. Okay. So is the requirement of every junior select either community service or job shadow? Correct. OK. So yep, and there's paperwork. There's a reflection that they have to do, but it's all part of the graduation. Everyone has to do that. Yep. OK. Yep. Sounds very good. Yeah. Um, speaking of the student uh, involvement, you said there was a council 
um, yep, the student school parents council. and yep. 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 Uh, are there other organizations that the students have that are able to give you direct input into things that are going on in the high school or you ask their input? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so we have a school council made up of I believe it's 42 students from each of the grades. They're elected by their classmates. That's a good number. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, and they meet every Tuesday uh, morning from 6:45 to 7:30. And so I often pop in to see what they're talking about and answer any questions I can at that point. I also mm -hmm. have a principal's cabinet, we call it which is three students from each grade where we meet once a month to talk about things that are going on at the school, improvements that we can make. Uh, so I, I think one of the things that we've tried to tried very hard at the high school is to let students have a voice in the decision making process and so I think we have a number of avenues for them to do that. Okay. Well there has been a couple of um, decisions or changes <coughs> in the school recently that students probably had some input to but sure. that I'd heard about and one involved the school dances. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about what happened there and how this Yeah, decision? sure. Yeah, so um, last year, uh, and it did come about from conversations that I had with students, mm -hmm. um, we decided to, to put a halt to our all-school dances, the dances that go grades 9 through 12. Nice. Okay. Um, we, we, we were seeing an increased level of just uh, inappropriateness and, and, and kind of an unsafe environment, and a lot of kids reporting that they did not want to attend the dances anymore, and that's something that we wanted to improve. Um, so we decided to, to put a stop. We only usually have one or two a year to begin with, but we said we need to try to do a better job of making that environment more comfortable so more kids would want to attend. Um, so I put it back on the students. I said, do you have any suggestions on what we can do to make the dances better? Uh, we got uh, quite a bit of feedback from the students. Uh, we had a ninth and 10th grade cotillion at the end of the year that for the kids who went, I thought it went great. They had an approved DJ song list. We had some, uh, a little bit more lighting in the athletic center. I mm -hmm. think the kids that went really enjoyed their experience. Um, in general, we do have dances at the high school. We have prom, we have a senior boat cruise, which is in essence is a senior prom. Uh, we have the ninth and 10th grade cotillion for them. Uh, it's just the all school dances. We're getting to a point that we needed to do a better job of creating a safe environment. And it's not something that we're against bringing back, but we wanna make sure that with the students buy-in, um, that we can create an environment that everybody is happy, healthy, and, and is enjoying their experience at a high school dance. Well, I applaud you on the decision, but I'm kind of curious as to what kind of input or feedback reaction you got from parents sure, regarding yeah, the decision. It was mixed. It was, it was mixed, mixed, certainly. Yeah. yeah, it was mixed. I mean, there were some people that, uh, it's difficult because a lot of parents haven't seen a high school dance. Uh, they haven't been to a dance, and mm -hmm. certainly we're not going to have parents be chaperones at the dance. I know that was some suggestions that came up, but um, it, it, it's... Some people thought it was, it was the right decision at the right time. They heard what their kids were saying about what was going on at the dances. Um, and then some people want there to be more things for their kids to do on the weekends. And, and I understand that. And uh, I am all for that. I want kids to have things to do. I want them to bring them back to the school. Um, but we want them to be healthy. And we want them to be safe mm -hmm. in, in an environment that's comfortable for everybody. And so uh, it, it started to veer away from that. And so we'd like to bring it back to an area where it's, it's much more comfortable. So, but in terms of the feedback, it was certainly mixed. Okay. Yeah. But, but that comes with a lot of the decisions. That absolutely. Have to make, so I, I was going to say there's probably not too many decisions yeah. that get made that you know, don't have yeah. both sides, pros absolutely. and cons, and absolutely. controversy. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was going to ask you is there, um, if you wanted to talk a little bit about where the curriculum is going in general, or are there any ma major changes recently? Sure. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any major changes recently. Uh, so we're very fortunate uh, to have what we call SMLs, the subject matter leaders for all the departments, English, mm -hmm. math, history, science, across the board. And so uh, we have people in those positions that teach uh, a reduced teaching load, and they are mm -hmm. in, in, in part of observing the teachers in their department, but also coming up and deciding on curriculum when it comes to their departments. And so we're fortunate to have some really dedicated people in those roles. Um, I feel like our curriculum, we try to be, uh, you know, 21st century. We try to be uh, ahead of the curve when it comes to some of uh, the curriculum decisions. I think we have, uh, like I said, great people in place to, 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 for that work. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say that there's anything new that we are doing with our curriculum. I think what we have right now is, is very solid and we have the right people in place to, uh, to lead moving forward when it comes to um, common core or whatever it may be. It okay. comes down the pike. But you have a lot of inter what I call the international component sure. throughout the school. Do you want to talk yeah, a little yes, bit we, about we, some yeah, of those Yeah, we elements? have what we call our international program. We have uh, usually around 15 students uh, that come from all over the place, from China, Germany, Brazil. Um, we have Korea. We have students from a number of different countries that come uh, each and every year. Uh, all grades, but typically it usually is senior and junior heavy. Um, and we actually have an upcoming international week uh, with uh, an international night on Thursday night where the students actually present about the countries that they came from. And it's really a, an outstanding night. Our assistant principal, Josh Hanna, is the one that uh, really runs the program and works with these kids when it comes to their classes and um, how much they're liking in high school and 
anything that they really need. And so he, he works with the International Week uh, as well as International Night, which we're looking forward to. Um, we have food throughout the course of the week in the cafeteria that is, um, comes from some of the countries that the kids have come from. Uh, we play national anthems in the morning of some of the countries where the kids have come from. So it's a really nice week, mm -hmm. um, and we look forward to it. I know the kids uh, really buy into it across the school, and I know it makes the international students feel really welcome to the high school. Well, by the time this program actually airs, International You're Night passing. may have it may, passed. It may have passed, correct. However, yes. maybe we can uh, turn to our wonderful HCAM <clears throat> team and see if we can Absolutely. maybe get... Absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah, we'd love to have them. Have them over there at, HCAM, at uh, International Night. HCAM maybe could air up the program that'd be, later. That'd be great. We'd love we to can have talk that. about that Certainly. and see if yeah. that's something that we can do, because yeah. it sounds like a good thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I also, in, in some notes here <clears> that <throat> I have, understand that there's a program that helps students um, get back into school after they perhaps have been in the hospital or an sure. extended yeah. illness leave. Or, we want to talk a little bit about the yeah, START Yeah, I'd be program. happy to. Yeah, so we're calling it the START program. It's actually a three-year grant uh, that we got. We had a lot of hard work from our adjustment counselors, Jane Gomes and Kirsten Gleason, to get this grant okay. at the end of last year. We're one of uh, a few schools in the Commonwealth that was able to get the grant. Um, across, the, across Massachusetts, there's a spike in, 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 in mental health issues for some of our students, and mm -hmm. um, students have having to be removed from school for an extended period of time. Um, and so we felt that there, there really wasn't this uh, buffer where the, when the students came back to have kind of a safe place to go back into the curriculum. Oftentimes they were being thrown right back into class and it was difficult and sometimes it would have them be missing more class and, uh, ultimately. Mm -hmm. So this program really was, was put in place to have students when they come back from an, a, a, a long-term illness, it could be a concussion, uh, they could be hospitalized, um, to take some time, usually it's anywhere between a week to two weeks where there are two teachers within the program. We have a licensed adjustment counsel and a teacher's aide, mm -hmm. get that student back on their feet, get them the work that they need, and then hopefully transition them back into the classroom the mainstream classroom. So uh, it's just started. We just started this past September, but um, we've had a few students go through the process, and so far it's been an unbelievable resource. We have excellent individuals in there. We have Becky Blacks, a teacher's aide, and, and Lisa Winters, the adjustment counselor that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so far the program has been great, and ultimately, hopefully, at the three-year end of the grant, we'll be able to fund this position moving forward because it's something that I've talked to other principals about, that we have this program, and every one of us is trying to figure out a way to have this uh, intervention where the students can come back to school, get their feet underneath them, and then go back into the mainstream class. And so we are lucky enough to be able to get this grant. So we're very, we're very pleased with it. Right. And you anticipated one of my questions because I knew it was a new program. I was going to ask if you'd had any students who were able to take advantage of it yet. And it sounds like you have. We and have. You're getting some experience. Yes. You know, and, absolutely. And yeah. Getting maybe some feedback from them on the program. Yes, so, we have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and. For the most part, the kids who have gone through the STAR program are now back into their mainstream class. And that's really the, the goal of the program, is to get them back into class. Yeah, uh, um, speaking of students, of course, again, I was mm -hmm. uh, happened to hear a conversation the other day when some parents were talking about the amount of homework sometimes mm -hmm. and the stress on students, especially absolutely. ones that have a lot of extracurricular activities, sure, AP classes. And yep. Are there some things going on that help students manage to the stress and the workload? Yeah, we're trying. It's yeah. certainly an issue that we, we acknowledge. Uh, we've had a, a goal at the high school for three years now around trying to have students reduce their stress or at least find ways to manage their stress. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have what we call uh, home, uh, homework free weekends, um, about a few times a semester, where we let the teachers know and the students know that there's going to be a weekend that we're going to kind of unplug. There'll be no homework. Um, and that's just one small effort that we're trying to make. Uh, that's that, a good one, know, though. It is, yeah. and, it's, and it's worked. And I think that uh, kids look forward to it. Staff looks forward to it. Now, we have one coming up over the Thanksgiving weekend, which people are looking forward to. We have what we call de-stress weeks. So throughout the course of the week, we try to have some fun games and activities throughout the day. Uh, we have therapy dogs that come into the guidance office. We play music in between passing time just to try to lighten the mood a little bit. Uh, teachers are very mindful that week of get, not giving too many assignments and too many assessments. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, again, we're never going to probably take away all the stress that comes along with the high school experience, but try to teach kids ways to manage it and, and, and find ways to help reduce it. Cause Kids nowadays are, are far more busy than they ever used to be, and it's very difficult. There's a, a lot of things, and it's 24-7. With the devices that they have in their hands mm -hmm. all the time, there's not really much of a time where they can shut down. And so we try to let them know that it's okay every once in a while to back off. And so those were some of these efforts that we're trying yeah, to do. That's a very good message. I mean, a little bit of stress you have to have to yeah. get through everything you've Correct. got on your plate anyway. Yep. yep. Uh, but trying to find a little bit of balance here and there, that sounds like a very good thing. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. We're trying. Yeah, and the st and students like, and student council and some of these groups that I talked about earlier are a big part of some of these decisions that we've made. Getting some feedback. Absolutely. And, yep. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Uh, what about... Um, 
you know, we've touched on it in and out through our conversation, but communications, <coughs> sure. communications of important things that are going on that day, like perhaps the drill for safety. Yes. But what about um, communications throughout the school year? I know the website is wonderful. It's yep. packed with information. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. But sometimes, in spite of your best efforts, it's hard to get information out to people, parents, students, you know, teachers, staff. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and yeah. And I, can, that? I can start with the students. I feel like what we have done, um, obviously Twitter has become a very uh, big tool for us when it comes to communicating with students. So the high school has a Twitter account. Both assistant principals have Twitter accounts. And a number of our teachers have Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times we're posting assignments or homework or upcoming events. Mm -hmm. Uh, through Twitter, and, and a lot of students will be able to get that. So that's been a very effective tool for us. Um, for parents, we, we obviously the website is available uh, also for students as well. We, we do a lot of listserv messages where we send home uh, messages to parents that have mm -hmm. signed up through our listserv. Um, we have a newsletter that goes out uh, usually the f around the first or second day of each month um, that talks a lot about all that's going on in the upcoming month. Um, but you're right, it's tough. to all, you, you get a balanced uh, Enough communication, but not too much communication. Yeah, and at the high school level, there's a little bit of independence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of independence that you try to give the information to the student that they hope that they bring it home. So the parents are probably uh, experiencing less uh, communication uh, at the high school than they would maybe at the lower levels, and that's that's on purpose. And mm -hmm. uh, but we still do our best to try to update the website, use Twitter, use our list serves effectively uh, to get the message out to parents. And so, uh, but that's something that we're very dedicated to in terms of making sure that we communicate. I do a uh, a weekly uh, memo to the staff. Uh, on Friday afternoons for the following week about what's upcoming. Uh, okay. And then uh, our, one of our assistant principals, Josh Hanna, that I mentioned before, does a student memo on Sunday nights for the upcoming week. Um, and his is a lot, you know, he's got, he's got pictures, he's got, he's got three pages of usually all the information that the kids would need throughout the course of the week. And uh, from all accounts, the kids love it. And they look at it so they know what's coming up. So there's definitely that week-to-week -week information, but on the bigger stuff, we'll communicate to parents through the serve messages on the website. And is it still okay if all else fails? Uh, fails to give a us a call, of course, pick up an the email, phone and absolutely. Say, yeah, what happens? Email, all, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yes, I of course. I need to know a little bit. About of course, this. and the, our, yeah. our door is always open. We we welcome any type of communication. If a parent has a question or a concern, they can certainly come in any time they want. All right. Yeah. And how about community support? Um, is the high school and are you and your team getting the community support that you need, or what else can the community do? Uh, the HPTA, you know, the Hopkinton Parent Teacher Absolutely. Association, yep. or the school board, or just the general public at large. Is there something, some yeah, message you'd like to give to, us? Yeah, yeah we no, can well, help no, you. it's tough for me to sit here and say that we want for much. I feel like yeah. we are very lucky to be supported uh, the way we are from our community. Our parents are outstanding. Our HPTA is phenomenal. Uh, anything that we, we need, they're there for us. Uh, the HEF, the Education Foundation, oh, is right, uh, education, quite often yeah. uh, giving us. Um, uh, excellent grants for us to put into work for, for innovation and technology in our classrooms. And um, You know, if we ever did want for something, I know we would be able to get it from our community because they care so much about the schools. And that's why I really feel fortunate to be in the position that I have in the town that, that we're in. It's, um, we're lucky. And, and so it, from, from my standpoint, uh, I can't imagine a place that has better community resources and has uh, better community support than we do. Well, that's yeah. very good to hear. And although it's been a long time since my son went through the mm -hmm. Hopkinton Public mm -hmm. Schools <laughs> and a graduate of the Hopkinton yeah. High School, in fact, I think they're coming, that's right, they're coming up on their 10-year reunion pretty oh, yeah, soon. Okay, yeah, yeah, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree with you. I think this is a wonderful community mm -hmm. in the support that we give our schools and how people get involved. And so Yeah, it's, 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 it's really great. Yeah. It's I, really great. I think overall, uh, Hopkinton schools are like in the top 10% across the state, mm -hmm. you know. And as I said, I hear more and more from new people who come into town. One mm -hmm. of the reasons they move here is because of the reputation of all of the schools, and particularly the high school and the programs. It, and and yeah, and I think that you know a lot of it comes from having some of the best teachers around. I mean, I think our staff is is outstanding. Uh, they're very dedicated, hardworking, care about kids. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it comes from the parents and getting their child or children ready to come to school each and every day. They're they're fed, they're clothed, they're they're invested, they're engaged. Um, so we're lucky. Uh, to have the ability to teach these kids. And I think a lot of it comes from the parents and how they, they bring their, their, their children up. And you combine that with some really dedicated, hardworking, uh, amazing staff members, and, and, and it's a nice place to be. I think one thing, though, is no matter how hard parents and teachers try to tell students to get enough rest and sleep, they don't seem to do they that. They don't. They <laughs> don't. And it's tough. I think that's a 24-hour being plugged in, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, you know, they it, get it their hurts, yeah. 
little you know laptop in their room or something Certainly. and you can't get them to go to sleep and I know it's tough and I know there's a lot of the, there's been movements from from other districts even around here trying to have the high school start a little bit later in the day and I know it's something that you know we haven't really had uh, a lot of conversation about mm -hmm. uh, but it's something that we've talked about and how that would work starting a little bit later uh, for our students and, and so they get the sleep that they need and so that's certainly the studies out there that say it's better to start later I'm not saying that we've made any type of decision or anything like that we're far from it we still need to have some initial conversations but it's something that in some of these school councils and student councils we've talked mm -hmm. a little bit about well there's always topics to look at and things possibly to try something else but yeah. I know it sounds like you your team the teachers the students everyone's involved to get a good look at everything and make changes and add new things as needed yeah and speaking of uh, uh, adding new things we, another thing I forgot to mention and it really came from our students during our student council is they wanted to see uh, have more access to their grades and so we used to post grades once a month just a number grade for a class mm -hmm. uh, and students wanted to see kind of all of their assignments more often so we changed our grading process to report out to parents and students to twice a month and that really came from the students and so this just started uh, so we're excited about that but well, it came from the kids thank you yeah. for sharing with that with us Great. and with everything that you've shared with us today um, the time did go fast it did. There's so it's many more by, things yeah. I'd like know, to right? talk yes. about yeah. but well, they're back. putting up my closing on the screen so right. I've got to say goodbye and right. thank, uh, thank you so you. much for having me I you're appreciate very it. welcome okay if you'd like to learn more about uh, and get more information about the Hopkinton High School visit their website located on the screen below for everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. Have a good day. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. I'm Dr. Martin Kafina. Lupus is a chronic inflammatory disease of the immune system that can attack various parts of the body, such as the skin, joints, or internal organs. It has been described as America's most common, least known disease. At least one and a half million Americans have the disease and more than 16,000 new cases are reported each year. 90% of those affected are women, with most between the ages of 15 to 44. The symptoms of lupus can vary from patient to patient, but joint pain, muscle weakness, fatigue, fever rashes, or sensitivity to sun or light are common signs of the disease. The effects of lupus can range from mild to severe, but it is a serious condition that requires constant monitoring and treatment. For more information, visit the American College of Rheumatology at rheumatology.com.